So what is the best starter Mac you can buy right now? I thought about it and I changed my mind. Welcome back to the channel. If you've watched my channel before, you know a couple things, at least one thing. I love the M1 MacBook Air sitting here and I always thought it was the perfect starter Mac. In fact, just a couple videos ago, I said, you know, you should still be buying this thing in 2023 and 2024 because it's just that good. I mean, obviously for the pricing and stuff, you just can't beat this. If you're just doing something like video editing, um, looking at emails, just basic stuff, maybe video conferencing. The M1 can handle it all still right now, but I've changed my mind on what the, takes the number one position for the starter Mac you should buy. I don't think you should buy this anymore, and I'm gonna tell you why in this video, so let's get into it. All right, let's just start with the M1 for a second, and we'll take a kind of step back. So the M1's an incredible machine. If you look over here at Best Buy, you can get this at for 749 bucks, or 750 bucks right now at Best Buy in the United States. For brand new it's pretty crazy right that's the base model now i talked to somebody just in the in the threads here um they, they gave me a comment about india they said it's way more expensive in india in fact we traveled to dubai on holiday to get the laptop and bring it back i'm like geez i would never i would have thought it was cheaper in india i have no idea so you learn something every day i guess pricing's all over the you know, all over the place in the world but here in the states this is the cheapest one you can get right now but I'm still, I'm not recommending it as the best starter Mac for a couple reasons, and we're gonna find out why, but it's really gonna come down to a couple key things. All right, so what really changed for me, all right? Well, a couple different things. Number one, the crazy sales right now, and I'm gonna show you a couple of them. The sales are making it so attractive just to get something beyond this, and uh, not that much beyond, but just something different than what I'm recommending on the M1. So this doesn't make a lot of sense anymore. But realistically, I took a step back and I said, in 2024, I'm turning the page on this. Apple will no longer sell me another device with eight gigs of RAM. Even if you're a starter person and you only, you know, you don't need much, I still think you should get in at 16 gigs if you're spending a grand on a computer. Now I'm gonna kind of challenge you and then at the end of it, I'll kind of show you, a, you know, a safety catch. If you still want the eight, I'm gonna give you an option for that. But I still think, I'm making a personal stand that it has to be 16 moving forward and eight is not gonna cut it. There's too many advancements coming out where you might need it later if you want it long term. So that's my stance I'm taking and that's why this is all changing. All right, so what takes its spot? And again, you have to get it at this cost for it to make sense to me. Take a look right here. 1099 right now, and it's not, it's not rocket science. The Apple M2 Air, right? This is the 13.6 inch, not the 15 inch. This is the perfect starter laptop right now. Now it's 1099, why is it 1099? Because look at this, this is pretty incredible. It's on sale right now, the M2 8-core chip, 16 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD. It's also got the 8-core GPU, so one more core of a GPU than the M1. But the key here is the CPU obviously is faster. We'll get into some numbers here in a second. But it's a 16 gigs of RAM that's gonna make a world of difference for a lot of people. If you like to have like a lot of tabs open, if you like to do various applications at once, we've seen a lot of numerous videos out there that come out where the eight gigs is just not cutting it. And uh, now granted, I'm again, I'm gonna give people an out in a second, so stay tuned for that. There's reasons, I mean, I, I get by with it, it's fine, and I don't run into too many problems right now. But there's a lot of advancements coming out with AI coming out and a lot of other applications that are gonna be more advanced, I think. And these are gonna be over the next maybe two or three years, especially with AI. And I mean, I think, you know, eight gigs of RAM on a laptop where it's, it's, it's okay now, it's not struggling that much, but when you get in, and I want 16, that's just the bottom line. I just do not wanna spend, give Apple any more money unless we change the way we think about this, they're gonna keep doing it to us. So I'm making a stand, but I also think for the average user, if you can get it for 1099 on this sale, you should do it and you should bypass the, M the M1 over here. Now, obviously, if you look down here, it's really weird. It depends on colors and stuff. So this is the space gray or the midnight only, the fingerprint, fingerprint magnet, but the space gray you can get too. But if you want silver or starlight, it's an extra 200 bucks. So it's, I mean, and that goes up to what, 12.99. That does, I mean, again, at that price, I'm not so sure. It's a lot more than this, but if you can get it at 10.99, it's a no brainer. All right, so the M2 over the M1, it's the MacBook Air, but you're getting that 16 gigs of RAM. But let's just talk about performance. It's not incredible huge gains, so let's talk about it. If you look over here, here's the Geekbench 6 single and multi-core CPU scores. Here it is, so the blue one here is the M1 chip, 2361 on the single core to 2639 on the single core for the M2 chip. And then for the multi-core, it's 8593 for the M1, 9789 for the M2, you can see it right there. I think this equates to about 15 to 18, 20% gains here. So the CPU is slightly faster. You're probably not gonna notice it from day to day. But obviously, you know, it's just gonna be faster than the M1, whatever, you know, whichever way you slice it, you may not notice it all the time, but on certain things you might like video editing and stuff like that. So overall, it's just obviously a bonus. And uh, for the 16 gigs of RAM and that cost, it's a really good deal. 
Now here's where it gets a little, little bit different. So if you look in here, here's some other scores. Now the SSD speeds, which I talked about earlier, they're both 256 drives, but the M1's actually 2895, and they didn't bend, like kind of bend that one. The M2 is only 15, 20 megabytes per second. So there's some differences there. The M2 is actually slower, so you're taking a downgrade there. That's something you got to think about, but I just, I've, with the 16 gigs of RAM, it's going to be way better, even with that slower drive, in, in my opinion. And then down here, you can see that on Metal 6, this is Geekbench Metal 6 graphics, you can see the M2 substantially scores higher on the graphics score because of that extra core and faster cores, 25,165 to 39,196, so pretty big difference there. And this is a big difference too, speedometer 2.0 web browsing speed. So you can see the M1's 341 and the M2's 511. That's a big difference there. I don't know what that comes out to, like 80% or something. That's actually gonna be how fast, you know, how responsive web pages are and stuff. And that's not even with adding that extra 16 gigs of RAM. That's actually just with the base versus the base. So it's even gonna be faster. So you can see there's gonna be some substantial gains with even your daily tasks with going this M2 model with that upgraded RAM. And now people are going to say, well, it's $750 over here versus $1099. There's still a huge difference there. And people are going to say, I don't think that's a, the right choice, right? Well, that's why I'm leaving it out for you. So if you, and, and other people I know, they always tell me, I use 8 gigs of RAM. It's fine. I never run into problems. And it's true. I mean, there's, there's problems I have run into with 8 gigs. And, uh, you know, I, when I had too many tabs open or if the sites that I went to were very heavy, you know, like ESPN, just sites like that, they could use a lot of RAM. Sometimes it would actually use more swapping and it would slow down. But overall, I agree. This thing can be very capable. But again, with AI and other stuff coming out, it's going to get, you know, it's going to go this, it's only going to go south from here with needing, you know, more than eight gigs of RAM. So, but for those people that kind of are holdouts and they're still young, I mean, look at this sale. So here it is. Again, this is at B&H, $899 right now. And it's the same exact model, 13. 13.6 inch MacBook Air, except down here, 8 gigs of RAM, 256. So if you if you think the 8 gigs of RAM, you want to stick with it, 899 right now, 200 bucks off, and it used to be 1099. So then get this. I think this this is way better than getting this for 749. And there's a couple reasons beyond this, but first of all, on this one you can get all the colors. <laughs> they don't they don't charge you up for silver or starlight, which is nice. Or, you know, who knows why they did that on the other one, but maybe they just ran out of models or something. Anyways, $8.99 is just an incredible price. But beyond this, it's going to come down to the OS updates as well. So if you think about it, you're getting at least a year, year and a half more of OS updates. You might get the next version versus the M1. When the M1's not able to get it, the M2's will. So I think just that alone is worth the 150 bucks, plus the added scores and, and all that kind of stuff. Even if you go with this base model with only the 8 gigs of RAM, I still think it's worth it. And I still think this is the perfect starter Mac. All right, so now the M3s are coming out, and a lot of people then ask me again, this is the question I get asked all the time, should I wait? I always tell people, get what you need right now. Everything in the world is going to change all the time, and you're always going to be thinking the next thing's coming. Just buy it, especially at this price I just showed you. I mean, the M3s will come out, the M3 MacBook Airs are going to come out, and I'm going to say, they're not, I mean, they already know what those CPUs are, right? the speed jumps, and they're not that big from the M2s. They're not going to be a huge noticeable difference. Plus, you're not going to get that 200 bucks off right away or the 16 gigs of RAM. You're going to be paying another two, 300 bucks for that just right off the bat. So you got to think, factor that in. I mean, I would get this thing now, get it cheap, use it, and you can sell it in a couple years and get the M4 or the M5 MacBook Air. Now, if the MacBook Air comes out, this new one in March, I think it's coming out in March, and it comes out with some crazy new thing like better screens and all this other stuff, then you got to consider that one, and then maybe you made a mistake. But from what I'm hearing right now, it should be very similar to the ones that are coming out, the M2s that came out and things like that. So I wouldn't really you know, put too much stock in it changing. I would just say pick up the M2 right now for this cost. It's, it's just a no-brainer. All right, let's wrap this up. So getting the extra year of OS updates, you know, the little bit faster CPU and some graphics performance, and also 16 gigs of RAM for 1099, that's the one you should buy. You tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. The 891 one is for people that want to hold out on the eight gigs. I mean, be, you do whatever you want, but I'm not doing it. So I'll talk to everybody soon. Please subscribe if you can, hit the like button. You know the whole drill, it's gonna help me out. I'm a small channel, try to like a lot of content in my free time. I waste a lot of my free time to make this content and I just want people to see it, otherwise it goes to no use, right? Anyways, we'll talk to everybody soon and uh, you'll see me in about a day or two. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Peace.